I want to do today is go back and revisit your um, lab activity from last time and go through it and in doing so cover a couple things that slip through the cracks that you need for your next assignment. So let's revisit the activity and we'll talk about what I want to have happen. First of all, I want a page, text box, button to search through the user table and return approximate matches based on last name. So if I type in MAC, it turn, returns McDermott, McDonald, anything that begins with MAC. All right. I want the person's last name, and I'm not sure if this was part of the original specifications or not, but it is now. I want the person's, <laughs> I want the person's last name to be a link. So the text of the link is the person's last name. And that will take us over to a page that will have the person's name again, a picture of that person, and their voting history, all the things that they voted in. Remember, this, this shows how many polls they voted in. This will show their voting history, poll A, they selected yes, or whatever. I then want this to be a link to our results page that we already did a few classes ago. All right. Um, I always say to take inventory um, before you begin this. And, and, and when, when I say that, what I mean is think about the stuff that you know, the stuff that you don't know, and sort of sketch out a plan of what it is before we start typing away. So I think minimally we should look at, we should look at, focus on a couple things. Should focus on the sequel involved here. We should focus on what controls that we need, and we should focus on what we need to pass from one page to another. Those are sort of the critical things of this particular assignment. All right. First of all, Actually, the controls are pretty straightforward in this case. We're going to need, on the first page, we're going to need a text box, a button, and a grid view. All right, that's the visual controls. How many SQL data sources are we going to need? We're going to need one. Because conceptually, we're pulling in one chunk of data. Person's name and how many polls they have voted for. What is that SQL statement going to look like? I didn't even intend this, but what is the SQL statement going to look like? <laughs> it's going to be a select statement. It's going to be a select statement. Does it need aggregate functions? Yes. yes. Why do you say it needs aggregate functions, whoever said it needs aggregate functions? Because we have to display the number of polls. Because we're displaying like a count of something. We're not displaying each individual poll that they had. We're displaying a count of something. All right? Um. What else is different about that SQL statement? Or what else do we have to consider in that SQL statement? How do we get the approximate match to work? We have to use like. We have to use like. All right. Like allows us to match partial strings um, within uh, a SQL statement. So as if I said 
where name equals Zellers, it would only pull up people whose name exactly matched Zellers. But if you think about for searches and the like, a lot of times we want an approximate match, right? Because, you know, if, if you are unsure of someone's name or, um, like, if you're searching a title for a book, if you only have part of the title, you know, um, it's valuable to be able to put in uh, just part of the string that you're looking for. So how does a like work? Last name, like. And then we'll have in our quotes maybe something like this. Or maybe something like this. What's the difference between those two? If I did the top one as opposed to the well, bottom one? The the top one would say anything before Huff and after Huff, and the bottom one would just be anything after Huff. Okay. So in other words, i got to think of a name now that starts like this, or that has this in the middle. Chuff. Chuffington. All right? This would match Chuffington, because H-U-F is in the middle of it. This would also match Huffman. All right? This would match Huffman, but not Chuffington, because we, it, it, this, this states that it must begin with H-U-F. This says H-U-F needs to be just somewhere in the string. So that's the difference between this. And with name, I guess you could make an argument either way, uh, of which way to do it. I'd probably do it this way, because if I'm thinking of, you know, uh, if I'm doing a search and I type in Z-E-L, I probably want Zellers, but I don't want Denzel. You know, probably not. So I would type in Z. I, I would use this string. But if you did it this way, I'm not going to argue with you. All right. Um, for, for certain things, it definitely makes sense to do it one way or another. For example, a title in the book, I'd probably use the first one so I could, like, maybe I want ASP.net anywhere in the title of the book. It doesn't matter if it's ASP.net, how to program, or how to program ASP.net. All right, I want to I match either one. So like titles for a book, yeah, I'd probably do that. Uh, names, I'd probably do that. But again, look at the situation and decide. All right. What tables are we going to need in the select statement? Users. Vote. Poll, maybe. Well, let's look. Let's look at that. Because I, I know that's hard to sort of answer without seeing the, the tables in front of you. So let's go in and open the sky up.
want the user, and we know we want the vote, that's actually sufficient. We could actually use possible answers in poll, but we don't really need them. So we could just do it with just these two. That's just for form one. For form one, right. All right, so user and vote. All right, so I think we have enough to get started on this guy. And as you all know, and you're probably sick of hearing it, but I'm not sick of saying it, so I'm going to keep on saying it, that I prefer to do things just a little piece at a time. So we could do it one way or another. We could either put the search in, for, we could either, you know, we can do it a bunch of different ways. I'm going to do it one tiny little piece at a time. First thing I'm going to do, and I want to illustrate this, is I want to show, because a number of people on the assignment had difficulty um, with their connection string. All right? If you look in the connection string in, wrong place, in the web config file, you'll see in my case, The selection string does not contain an exact path. It says pipe data directory slash polls.accdb. What does that mean? Well, it's the default data directory for this application. What is the default data directory? It is the app data folder within that. What you should not see there is c colon slash user slash mzeller slash thumb drive slash cis243 slash should not see the actual physical path there if you see the actual physical path there then if i move if you move it someplace else if you put it on a different machine, if you put it up to a web server, whatever, is going to break. So a lot of the cases, it, it won't run. I mean, you know, I would, and, and I saw that in a lot of cases on the homework assignment. I would download it on my machine, go and run it. Well, I don't have E, John Smith, whatever your name is, um, CISS243 folder. That's not where I put it, and therefore it would give me an error. So the bottom line is, is that there's a few ways to, to, to create the connection string, all right? The bottom line is, is when you're done, your connection string should look like this, as opposed to having the full path hard-coded, all right? If you need a hand correcting that in lab, I'll be glad to, to give you a hand with that. But I did want to mention that right off. All right, so let's go back to work here. And let's create a new file, a web form, and I'll call it user list. Place code in a separate file, yes. Select master page. I didn't really do any master pages, so oftentimes you would say yes but I didn't create any in this example. And away we go. All right. So, let's first show all the users in our table. So, how do we do that? I drag my SQL data source over. Configure it. Point to my connection string. Select user ID, first name, last name, 
square bracket, and I swear I did not do that to mess you up. User being a reserved word. You can always put a column name or a table name in, in square brackets. Uh, you have to if it's a reserved word. And apparently reserved word means something, and, and therefore some of you got it there. And again, that, that would have been a good idea had I thought of doing that, but it, it was an accident. Why am I picking user ID even though I'm not going to display the user ID? You're going to need it to send them to your next page. Exactly. The one thing that I neglected to talk about when we were designing this is how do we get from this page to that page? What, or in other words, what does this page need to work? This page needs to know which user I want. How do we identify which user we want? Well, by definition, what do we use to identify a specific row in a table? The primary key. So we need to pass the primary key. So this link, the text of the link is going to be their last name, let's say. The link over here, though, we need to pass not the last name, but the user ID over here. So I need all of those. I might not display the user ID, because that's just a, a sequential number. Who cares? It doesn't really mean anything. But I need it to pass to that other page. So I'm going to test my query. There we go. I probably should put an order by in here. enable sorting and all that kind of stuff. You know what? I'm not going to particularly do a lot of formatting on that grid view now. Why? Because I'm going to change that SQL statement. And I don't want to make it look all pretty exactly the way I want it to, then change my SQL statement and go and have to redo those things once it refreshes the columns. So I'm just going to do just enough just to make sure this works. So I can go and run it and sure enough, it works. Well, that's confidence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it works. It okay. As soon as I said that, it's like, what if it doesn't work? What if I forgot <laughs> something? But I should have known. All right. Questions up to this point. This is kind of the stuff we've been doing all along. All right. Let's add the other two controls. The text box. I have to pause and think because in, in Android it's called a text view or an, an edit text view. So I, I have my Android class later on today so I have to do these internal translations in my mind <laughs> sometimes. And I'm sure at least once tonight my Android class, is anyone in my Android class here? Yeah, I'm sure once tonight I'll call it a text box in, in the Android class. All right, let's see, and let me go and add my button. All right, I'm going to call this guy TXT name. Oops. I'm going to call this guy button submit. Or button search, it's probably better. All right. Now I got to wire these two together. So what do I need to change? SQL statement. SQL statement, right? And where does that live? In the SQL data source, right? So I'll go configure data source.
What do I add here? I add a little where clause. Where. And I'll do last name search only. Last name like. And what do I want the last name to be like? I already said I want it to be a string, all right, at the beginning. And what's the value of that string? I don't know. It's going to be supplied at runtime. So what do we put in for a parameter that gets supplied at runtime? Question mark. Do I want to leave it like that, though? No. No. Why not? Because then I'll just pick out. Then I'll look for an exact match. Yeah. I have to include the wild card somewhere, in other words. I'm doing an approximate search. I have to include the wild card. So where do I want the wild card? In this case, I want it after. So I want to concatenate on a percent sign there. Order by last name. So what this will do is this will take in my parameter, whatever it is, slap a percent sign on the end of it, and do a search. I now have to say where that question mark is going to come from, and where does it come from? It comes from the text box, which is a control. And what text box? TXT name. Is there a default value? No. In other words, if I don't enter anything in, I don't particularly have a default. And I can test this query. Put in an H. We should get Huffman, Harms, and Huber. All right, let's go and run this. So now I go in and I type in H, and I get Arms, Huffman, and Huber. Type in a Z, I get Zellers, and so on. How did you get the search button to do that? Yeah, this is a question you were asking last time. Because it's a submit button, right? A submit button, by definition, resubmits the form. So I'm submitting this form back to itself just by virtue of the fact that this is a submit button. All right, if we look at the HTML code that gets generated, we'll see that that button is a submit button. So just by virtue of the fact that this is a submit button, it sends it back to the server. All right, when it sends it back to the server, what does it do? It goes and redoes all those controls. So now it goes and it redoes that SQL data source. This time it plugs in the value of the text box and it gets the results. So, one second. So how does it do it? Well, just by the virtue of the fact that we have this set up, we have these controls set up in a certain way. Every time the page loads, those controls refresh themselves. All right? So that query is done again every time that page reloads. And each time that submit button is pressed, the query gets done, and it uses a value of the text box. So because you called it button submit? No, because it's a submit button. It's, 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 I could have called it Fred. It's still a submit button. Uh, so where, where was that typed in again? Well, by default, I didn't type it in. All right. By default, a button, when I go and drag a button over, By default, where is it? Use submit behavior. So by default, that's set to true. I could make it to false if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. So I, I think every submit button, every button we've done so far in this class we've made a submit button because we wanted to submit the form. You had a question, Mike? Yes. Is, is, is that because this is in uh, a .NET IDE, 
it's a, it's a it's NTAG, it's .aspx, that's why it's by default the uh, submit button? No, it's because that control, all right, that ASP.NET button control has properties which sets and defines whether it's a submit button or not. By default, the property is, yeah, make this guy a submit button. That's what this thing is. What I'm getting at is if I wrote it in HTML, it would automatically be a submit button. Well, if you wrote it in HTML, then whatever you coded it would be. Yeah. If you coded it as a submit button, okay. it would be a submit button. If you didn't code it as a submit button, it wouldn't be. All right. So if that's the setting that makes it submit, mm -hmm. you know, where is the, the kicker that shows it, that tells it to be a post back versus post back URL? There ain't none. What does it mean when there ain't none? Pardon my bad grammar. <laughs> Who does it post to? Even in HTML. This is just HTML behavior, by the way. This is not something distinct to, to ASP.NET. If you don't specify a action, what does the form submit to? Itself. All right. So again, if I go and run this, let's look at the HTML it generated on the form. Well, in this case, it explicitly says userList.aspx. Why? Because it implemented and it looked and says, oh, they didn't specify where they want this submitted to. Well, I'm going to submit it to itself. So to answer your question, by virtue of the fact that we are not specifying a different postback URL, it defaults to submitting it back to itself. Is there um, any easy way just to get it to submit part of a form? Like, say, uh, a page that you only want like, the form to submit, you don't want, like, say, like, uh, a user ID submission to some, uh, postback as well? Like, it seems like a postback the whole page every time it does that. A form post and it's in posts in its entirety. If you don't want a form to post in its entirety, then you have two forms, actually. Then you'd make two forms. All right? So, you know, it's always going to send everything that was entered on the form. So there's no way you could say, don't send this, other than by excluding it from the form. Yes? Is there a property on the grid view where you can display an empty grid with just the headings? Um, good question. I do not believe so. Um, could look. So in other words, if there's nothing you want to show so the user something, sees yeah. There's something there. Um, empty data text. Search. If you want them to do a search, I would probably put some. 